Sylvia here from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, July 30th, and I am back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you have all been well and you've been stitching and making and creating all of the things. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast about cross stitching and quilting. However, if you are not interested in seeing or hearing about the quilts, I show those later on in the video and I let you know in plenty of time that they'll be making an appearance so that, that way you can go on to the next floss tube video. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So hello, how are you? How have you guys all been? I can't believe it's already been two weeks since my last video. I feel like I probably say that a lot, but this year really has flown by. As far as the year as a whole, I mean, we're um, finished with the seventh month. We're about ready to go into the eighth month of the year. And this has probably been the most unfunnest year in my entire life. <laughs> So if it wants to continue going by fast, I'm okay with that because I'm just ready to be done with the whole entire year. <laughs> um, so the last week uh, has had its ups and downs. Uh, my quilt machine ended up going into the shop. It needed to be, you know, cleaned anyway. And because of COVID, um, it kind of delayed it going in to have its cleaning and then it started acting up and I finally had to send it in. It's gonna be gone for probably three, three and a half weeks unless it needs parts. Haven't heard anything yet. Um, I'm hoping he, he was able to look at it, determine that it just needed a cleaning and that's all. <sighs> because I just don't, I just, I need things to just go smoothly for a little while. <laughs> Uh, right before I started this video, my clicker that I used to turn on and off the video, it broke right in my hands. So I'm hoping that is not a precursor to how the video is going to go. I hope that once I am done filming, it will upload fine and it'll just all be fine and everything will be fine and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow morning. So, but it is a lot later in the day than when I typically film. It's coming up on two o'clock. So that everything kind of slows down a little bit. So I, I hope, I just really, really hope. <laughs> First off, I wanna say a great big thank you for all of the kind comments about the quilt that is hanging up behind me. I really love this one. I love how it finished and I was, and I even said this in my last video, I was a little bit nervous about, you know, hanging it up and, and worried that, you know, it was a little bit of a darker quilt so you wouldn't be able to see it so much, but I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that I hung it up. I really, really like it. And thank you so much for all of your kind comments. It's probably one of my favorite uh, quilts. I just, I love all of the fabrics and I just love it. So thank you to everybody for all of your kind comments. I really do appreciate it so, so much. I forgot to mention in my last video, uh, I know a lot of you guys have been wondering how Brian's recovery is, you know, progressing and he is doing wonderful. And thank you so much for um, inquiring and for continuing to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. If you're new here uh, back in April, his uh, gallbladder ruptured and caused all sorts of problems and we actually almost lost him. Uh, but luckily the doctors were able to, you know, save his life. So, but he is doing great. And thank you so much for still continuing to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. I'm just going to go ahead and dive right into what I have been working on over the past couple of weeks. There were some days where I got quite a bit of progress and some days where I didn't. It just kind of depended on what was going on that day. Um, I, I would say that for me, summer stitching and even summer sewing, it slows down a little bit. I Typically, it's the opposite for a lot of people. They get more stitching and more sewing done in the summer and like on vacations, but I am just the opposite. I feel like I do better in like the autumn and the winter because there's not a lot going on. And you know, the days are shorter, so the nights are a little bit longer. And I feel like typically I get a lot more accomplished during the, those months than I do like the summer months. So as far as like my morning stitch, which I had somebody ask, what is, you know, what is a morning stitch? Well, basically in the, what it is is in the morning for like half hour, 45 minutes, 
before I start my day, while I'm having a cup of coffee and, and typically watching floss tube, I will work on some sort of a cross stitch project. It's usually a small, it's something that's not intended to take a really long time. It's something that I can get done in like a week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, and it's also something that might just go here in my trench bowl or something that might hang on the seasonal tree, just something really, really small. It also helps me feel a little bit accomplished, especially in, you know, I do work with a lot of larger projects and it, so it kind of helps me feel accomplished and helps me, helps the motivation when it comes to working on the larger projects that I do in the evenings. So for the past two weeks, maybe three weeks. I've been working on Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais. I haven't worked on this exclusively in the morning. There were a couple of mornings that I just did not get a chance to stitch or when I did, I instead worked on like the grass on Liberty's Welcome. Uh, and like yesterday morning, I ended up working on Jack's house and just filling in some more of the house because I did not, I think I only stitched for 15 minutes yesterday and about 25 minutes this morning. So uh, when I do work on, you know, a project, this is the one that I have been working on. I kind of hoped that I would have it done, but this is all of the progress that I made. I was able to finish stitching on her and I think in my last video, I mentioned that I was not very happy with the threads that I had used for her face and that I was gonna rip them out. And I decided that I'm not gonna do that and I just backstitched her face. So it does show up a little bit better. And also when I get done stitching this entire piece, I am going to grunge it up a little bit with some um, primitive antiquing spray that I have. And it will be a little pillow finish that will go here in the trench bowl. So I'm hoping that over the next two weeks, I will be able to get this done and get it fully finished and put in the trench. I'm using a variety of threads on this one. I didn't have very many of the called for, so I kind of substituted what I had in my stash. So I've got, you know, just a little bit of everything. Uh, when I get done, I will share the conversion that I did in case anybody is interested. But honestly, all I did was I looked at what the called for color was, looked to see if I had something that matched the color closely. And that's kind of how I, you know, I kitted it up. I did have a new start over the past couple of weeks. I think we started this last Thursday has it already been that long I think it was last it was last I know it was last week um, but this particular sampler um, I I've seen this a lot on Instagram and Facebook a lot of stitchers have stitched it um, I've also seen this particular one in person and it's absolutely beautiful and that is our lasting friendship by Blackbird Designs so I, I, I've always wanted to stitch this one and I finally decided that I needed to. So I grabbed a couple of friends, um, Yvette, Carol Crago, and Lauren are stitching this with me. And it's so fun to have, it's just so fun to stitch a project with friends. I believe this is going to be our Blackbird weekend project. So it will be in my rotation for a while, um, but I love it. It's such a beautiful sampler. The colors are beautiful. And when I have it done, it's going to hang in my bedroom because I think it'll be the perfect companion for Anne Priest. A lot of the same colors or the same color palette, I mean, minus like the pinks and things like that, um, but there's a lot of the same like color palettes in Anne Priest that is in this one. So I didn't have very um, a very big start, just kind of up there in the upper left-hand corner. And I do not know why I start in the upper left. It must have something to do with I'm right-handed, uh, but it's just easier for me to stitch up in the left-hand corner. Um, I am stitching it with the called for threads, and this is a piece of 36 count Legacy by Picture This Plus, and I am stitching it one over two. But even with that little bit of a start, it's, I just love the colors. I just, I really do. This one's gonna be a lot of fun to work on and to watch it unfold as time goes by. 
And here are the colors. Just a beautiful palette. You got some greens and browns, and it's just, it's gorgeous. I love it. And I can't wait. I know we will have to modify a couple of the um, uh, motifs because uh, I think there is a motif for six friends. And so just two of the motifs we'll have to modify. But it's beautiful. And I'm so glad that they were totally down for stitching it with me because like I said, I've wanted to stitch this one for a long time. And I just decided to, I just decided to go ahead and do it. Um, I, it's not always easy for me to, you know, there's always so many things that I want to stitch, like, partic like stitch with people. And it's, I'm always like, you know, even though I know that stitchers are some of the most kindest people and they're always down for a good stitch along or to stitch with friends, I'm always so nervous when I approach, you know, like, hey, do you want to do this with me? And then I, I always am like, oh, what if they say no? And anyway, but I'm glad that they were totally up for stitching it and it's going to be a lot of fun. Next up is Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler by Stacy Nash Primitives. I've been working on this one for the past couple of months and I thought I was going to get a little bit farther ahead, but I was able to completely finish the house and start on the bottom border. So the way that I look at the chart, I did the hardest part or the most time consuming part, which was the house. And now it's just finishing the rest of the alphabet. There are um, a few motifs on the other side of the house and then just stitching the border. But I love this one. I cannot wait to have it finish. I think once I finish Liberty's Welcome, which is will probably be tomorrow, uh, this one is going to be the one that I'm really going to have in my rotation. I'm gonna focus on this one and go at it pretty hard to try to get it finished. So. I mean, I still will work on, you know, my regular stuff, but as far as how I do my routine, um, the plan, my plan is to just really focus on this piece and try to get it done because I'd like to have it done by the end of summer. Had to pause really quick because the mail lady came and I wanted to like meet her uh, so that way she didn't ring the doorbell and then send Freddie into a frenzy. <laughs> Uh, anyway, and she told me that today is her last day on our route and she's been on Mail Lady for 10 years and I'm super bummed because I really like her. So hopefully the, the new lady will be just as cool. So continuing on, um, I did have um, another question and it relates to this project that I'm going to show you next. Uh, so Yvette and I have had a autumn project that we stitch on every single Wednesday. I think we started doing it in, last fall because we, fall is like the main thing, especially for me. Um, I've stitched a lot of Halloween, but when it comes to autumn, that's something that I don't have a bunch of. And when I, I do decorate for the seasons. So I decorate for Halloween, and then when I take all of those down, I do decorate for Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And when it comes to decorating in November with like Thanksgiving type, autumn type um, stitching, I don't have a whole lot. And so that's something that I've been kind of trying to focus on a little bit. And I've decided that even if I do stitch a piece like the Reverend Gordon squash bottom, I'm still going to have him up probably all the way through November because again, I don't have a whole lot of Thanksgiving autumn decor. So um, Autumn Wednesdays has been a chance for Yvette and I to kind of work on those autumn pieces. And a handful of weeks ago, we started stitching on Jack's House Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. And we're both almost done. I'm hoping to have this one finish next week. I did make a tiny little mistake and luckily I'm not that far away to where I can't go fix it really quick, but I was just sort of mindlessly filling in the house and I forgot that there's a door that I also need to fill in. So I'll go in and um, I will fix that. But this is my progress so far. Hopefully you are able to see it. I saw that the sun is starting to come around 
and it's starting to really shine in the opening of the curtain so hopefully you can see the house uh, but this is how far I have gotten and when I finish it when I am finished with it I will put it into a pillow and I'm not sure that it's gonna fit in the trench bowl I think it might be a little bit too tall but I have other um, seasonal autumn-y things that I will be able to put this with um, I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count Confederate gray with all of the called for threads one over two and I love this I did make a change so the um, the three pumpkins are supposed to have like a um, three different jack-o-lantern faces and I decided to eliminate two of them and just fill them in as a pumpkin and then um, I couldn't resist the one pumpkin having a grinning face. So I will keep this up um, all the way through the seasons even though the jack-o-lantern has a jack-o-lantern face. Um, I really love this. Really, really love it. So hopefully in my next video I will have that as a finish. That is kind of what I am. I've got that one, Liberty's Welcome, that are like my two main, I'm going to get those done very soon. So I'm excited to have two finishes kind of really close together. Next up is Autumn at Hawthorne Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I was able to work on this one over the past couple of weeks. I think in my previous video, I'm not sure that I had worked on it. Uh, but I was able to uh, finish the four horses and begin working on the field. And then I don't have too much farther to go on this one, just um, filling in the field. And then underneath the horses is sort of a, um, there is a, a little bit of a scalloped border and then just bringing down the sides and the bottom of the block and then I will be finished. Uh, this one will come back into my rotation next week and I love it. I did make some color changes and when I get through stitching the block I will have the conversion for that. It was only a few um, colors that I swapped out but I've had a lot of you guys ask and as soon as I get this block done I will, um, I'm not sure yet how I'll do it, if I'll just put it down in the description box or if I will do a blog post. I've been terrible about doing blog posts, um, so I haven't quite figured out how I will make sure that information gets to everybody. But I love this one. I love that salt box house. It just makes me so happy. I just love looking at this particular block. But it will be really nice to go on to the next one, which is, looks like an apple tree with a dog sitting underneath it. There it is. I know it's glaring really bad, but um, I'm stitching Autumn at Hawker and Hollow on 40 count vintage country mocha with DMC threads, of a variety of DMC threads, uh, one over two. And I have decided, because I also have, well, Halloween at Hawkern Hollow is already in progress. It's um, hanging out in the mocking basket. But I do have the houses of Hawkern Hollow and the farms of Hawkern Hollow. I think I just have those two. And when I get ready to stitch those down the road, because <laughs> it's gonna be a little while, um, I'm going to stitch them on 36 count. I mean, I like, working with the 40 count but I really feel that 36 count is that's kind of like my favorite count and I think that we'll see I'll have to see how much of a difference it makes I don't think it'll make too much of a difference as far as like the size of the piece uh, but we'll see I might do a 37 count it just kind of depends we'll see uh, Next up is Plum Street Samplers Liberty's Welcome. So this was my New Year New Start that I started stitching January 1st with Yvette. And we're relatively in the same area. I think she's going to finish tonight because she just has the, um, the wording here to do. I think she's done with all of the stitching. 
So she will finish tonight. I probably won't because I've got to edit this video and I don't know how long that'll take me. Usually with it being this late in the day, by the time I wait for um, all of the little clips to kind of back up to where I can go in and start fiddling with them, um, it'll be like closer to dinner, maybe even after dinner. So I probably will be editing the video for several hours after that. So I don't know how much stitching I will get on Liberty, but um, I am planning on having this finished tomorrow. And here is my progress. So I just have a little bit of the grass left to do. I have to finish the wording. I started it last night because I wanted to see what it looked like. And then I have a couple of stars that I need to go up uh, towards the top that I need to add. And then I realized I left one of the smaller stars off that is towards the bottomish area. So I need to go in and make sure I fill those in. But other than that, that's all that I have left. So even if I am able to stitch on this for, you know, if I'm lucky enough that I get an hour, um, that would be awesome because I'm so, so close and I just, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I absolutely love this piece and I'm hoping that I will be able to frame it myself and I can't wait to have it up on my wall. And I'm gonna leave it up all year because I just, I absolutely love it. There was a lot of work that went in this and I just love it, love it, love it. I'm so excited to have it done. <laughs> um, I'm stitching Liberty's Welcome on a piece of 36 count Heartland with all of the call for DMC, except for the house, which is DMC 648. And thank you again to all of you guys who gave me that recommendation for the house. It is the perfect gray. It looks exactly like the picture and I just love it. Love it, love it. Oh, I can't wait to have it done. Cannot wait. I had uh, a couple of you ask if um, I plan to stitch the other ones in the series. Yes. Originally, before, uh, so as I approached the new year, um, the plan was to start Liberty's Welcome January 1st. And then, you know, when you look at the picture, you're like, eh. I'm gonna get that done in a couple of months, no problem. It's way bigger than it looks. <laughs> Especially that house, it's just, it's way bigger. Way, 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 way bigger. Um, but originally the plan had been, I'm gonna stitch on Liberty's Welcome, and then when it's done, I'm gonna do Tide and then Yuletide Welcome. Uh, but no, I, um, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from the welcomes. I have them all kitted up, and uh, next year, I don't know when in the year, uh, but next year I plan on starting one of them. I haven't decided which one yet. Um, I guess it'll decide on when in the year I decide to work on it. Um, but no, I need to take a little bit, a bit of a break because they both have huge houses, huge pieces of grass. I need to take a break. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but as for this year, no. <laughs> Now, I have had some of you guys ask about what my plans are once Liberty's Welcome is done. Will I start something new? Will I pull something out of the mocking basket? And I've decided to pull something out of the mocking basket. Originally, I was gonna start something new, but I decided that I only have a handful of projects in the basket. There were a couple of them that I took out and de-kitted because I just, um, I wasn't loving them. But I, since I've only really taken out uh, um, Autumn at Hawker and Hollow, I felt like it was time, especially this late in the year, it was time to pull something from the mocking basket. So I will return to Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. I started this one last year. I started stitching it with Christy Crosshatch Quilts and it's a beautiful piece. A lot of you guys have asked me when I plan to begin stitching on this one again because you guys also had kitted it. Um, and I will start working on this one again um, when Liberty's Welcome is done. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stitch it in these next coming two weeks, but definitely the following two weeks. Because again, I want to try to get Jack's house finished, Liberty's Welcome finished, and then kind of see 
where I'm at as far as like uh, Cherry Hollow. Is it possible to get Cherry Hollow done? I don't think so, but um, I think I kind of have these next two weeks mapped out, I think. But I'm very excited to return to this one again. It's a beautiful piece, beautiful colors. And this is the progress that I made on it before I set it aside last year. So again, it's got another giant house to go. It's got a cemetery down below. There's a lot of stitching left on this one, uh, but I'm excited. I've been looking forward to, I've been thinking about this one a lot lately, probably like the last two months. I've seen a couple people finish it and, and every time I, I, you know, I was watching their progress. So every time I saw them post a picture of it, it just made me want to stitch it more and more. And I'm excited to get back to this one. The plan is to keep it in the rotation until it's done. I'm not allowed to take anything out. And I'm pretty sure that I'm kind of at my max right now, um, especially with adding um, our lasting friendship. Um, I feel like as far as like all, like the stitch rotation goes, I'm pretty full. <laughs> and I just need to like focus on what I've got. So now when I finish, um, Cherry Hollow, I plan to do a Christmas sampler. Um, it's one of the Christmas samplers by Blackbird. I can't think off, off the top of my head. It's one of the, I think it's, um, there's like a series of four and it's one of them. And I let Brian pick it out. I showed him the three that I had. Uh, one of them is that really big one, Christmas Garden. And then um, I can't think, there's the two other ones. They're part of the the series of four and I have two of them and so I showed him both of those um they're not like huge samplers but I feel like I need to start maybe thinking about Christmas because I don't have a whole lot of stitched Christmas pieces and so he picked out that one it's the one that I should have I'll have it next time because hopefully I'll be closer um but since I brought it up I'll next time I'll write a note to myself and, and I'll I'll show it in my next video but it's I think it says Merry Christmas on it it's got like two little deer and there's trees and is there a there might be a house in the middle of it I think anyway I should have brought it especially since I knew I was going to talk about it but I didn't <laughs> blame my stub toes how's that sound <laughs> anyway so Let's talk about my rotation because I have had a lot of people asking me, oh, before, before I talk about that, here are the threads for um, Lazy Bear Mountain. So they're beautiful. This is um, Jen Lee Quirks and Stitches. This is her um, conversion that she shared with us. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's another re reason why I'm excited to get back to it because I just love that color palette. This. This color palette is like all of the colors I love for autumn. I just love them all. Just those bright oranges and the like the burnt orange reds and I just love them all. Okay, so I've had a lot of you guys asking about what my rotation looks like because some of you guys are considering or you have multiple projects and you want to be able to work on them. Um, so before I started doing floss tube, I was a monogamous stitcher. Um, I did have a few works in progress that I had sort of set aside, two of them being Autumn at Hawker and Hollow and Halloween at Hawker and Hollow, as well as there is a Heaven and Earth Designs called Simply Meant to Be. Um, that one, I think I showed it, um, I did like a end of the year video I don't remember, I might have done it after Christmas last year, and I think I showed that one. Um, and that one I have the, uh, the skeleton, um, his head done. But it, I started it when I kind of got back into cross stitching and I didn't really understand like counts of Ada, counts of linen. I mean, I had stitched on Ada, but it was always the Ada my grandma gave me. So I really didn't know too much about counts and how many threads you should use. And so I was using an 18 count Ada and I was using it with two strands of threads and the threads are very bulky and I actually think I'm probably going to start that one over again. And I remember when I told my husband that I was thinking of doing that, I told him like last year sometime, he thought I was nuts, but I just cannot, I just remember struggling stitching that piece 
because I was using so many threads. I just didn't know. And now that I know, I do want to restart it over again. I have the other half of the 18 count Ada as well as all the DMC for it. So I think that at some point I probably will restart that one. But um, for the most part, I was a monogamous stitcher and then I started doing floss tube and I thought I need to get like a little bit, you know, there's so much I want to stitch all at once. And so I was starting all these projects and I had, I was just kind of all over the place and I had to get some sort of a rotation down. Um, and then Yvette, what was it back in March? I think it was, she kind of helped me reconfigure my stitch rotation so that I could work on a variety of projects, but still have progress because I was only working on things one day a week. And this new rotation enables me to work on things three days. So I have my Needleworkers notebook. Um, I picked up a copy, or this copy, at the Silver Needle back in uh, November maybe, November, December last year. Um, it's been very helpful because I'm able to write down everything. It's not always, I don't always write down, you know, for instance, like my morning stitch, there are some days up here where I did not list what I was working on. And it could be that I wasn't working on anything that day or I was working on the grass on Liberty's Welcome. But all in all, it's been a great resource for me to kind of keep track of my stitching. I do do it in a three day rotation. So I'll have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'll work on, let's say Liberty's Welcome. Wednesday is my autumn stitch, so that's been Jack's house. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I might work on Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. So having it in my rotation for those three days has been very helpful. I also look at the month as a whole. And for instance, August, I just started going in and adding what I will be working on. So I also have to consider that I have a brand new project, which is our lasting friendship that will be over the Blackbird weekend. So that's um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I will have to reconfigure my stitch rotation a little bit as I go along. But this way it helps me keep track of what I'm working on. Um, I can make sure that I am working on everything that's, you know, that I have currently in my rotation. Um, the only thing that's changed over the last two months is I've worked on Liberty's Welcome a little bit more than I would have normally. And that's just because I want to get it done and I'm ready to get it done and I'm ready to move on. So having this has been a really great resource. Again, I just kind of, you know, I, I look at my rotation in the terms of a month and I just sort of map it out. I always do it in pencil because I'm always changing things a little bit. Um, especially if I'm towards the end of a project and I wanna get it done, I will, instead of just like crossing it out and writing something else in pen, at least in, in pencil, I can go in and, and um, erase it and you know, kind of keep things a little bit neat. Otherwise my book would be full of like X marks and white out and all sorts of stuff. But I hope that kind of explains um, how I do it. I didn't do a video. I, I had a number of you ask if there was like a specific video where I talk about it. I don't think I did. I think I just kind of explained it a little bit like that. Um, having it in a three day rotation works for me. Um, I like it. I feel like I get quite a bit more accomplished. And as far as the variety of projects that I have going right now, that fluctuates as the year goes on. Um, it could be that, you know, once I finish Cherry Hollow, I might take a little bit of a break and maybe focus on Anne Priest for a while. Notice I did not show her, and that's because I did not work on her over the past two weeks. Um, so I might kind of look at it and think, well, maybe it needs to be adjusted a little bit. When I finish something, maybe I won't add anything new back in until I've worked a little bit more on some of my other stuff. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I try to keep it fun. I enjoy working on every single one of my projects. I look forward to it every single night when I do sit down to stitch. I had a couple of you ask what my stitching setup is like. I don't have a dedicated stitching spot. I usually will stitch at the kitchen table or I stitch in bed. 
and that's that's about it I am hoping to get a stitching chair because when I do I'm gonna get a really cool lamp and I'm gonna have a, like a Lowry floor stand I don't I don't have it yet but when I do that's kind of how my setup will be and it will be in the other room next to my sewing machine so someday in my last video I did have a giveaway and thank you so much to everybody who entered to win the prizes there were 11 chances to win and they were all wonderful items that the Fat Quarter Shop had sent me to share and show with all of you guys. Um, the question was, what are your summer stitching plans? And I enjoyed reading through all of the comments and just the wide variety of projects that everybody is working on. So thank you so much for commenting and entering. Uh, the first winner, and if I, I apologize if I butcher anybody's names, um, but the first winner is Donna, I'm going to say Hirons, and that I'm pretty positive that is completely wrong, but Donna Hirons, uh, you won the Among the Stars Again Block of the Month. Uh, number two was Alicia Schultz. Uh, number three is for the festive quilt pattern, and that is Kathy Firth. Number four is the cross stitch finishing dots, and Carol Wenzel is the winner. Number five are for these two charts by Lori Holt. This was part of the Prim Stitch series, and the winner is Mary Nelson. Uh, number six is for the Oregon Trail template set, and the winner is Karen Bellini. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> number seven is for the Flea Market Flowers Cross Stitch by Lori Holt, and the winner is Glee Hansen or Hansen. Hansen. I can't even read my own handwriting. Glee Hansen. Number eight is for the Kaleidoscope Quilt Book by Lori Holt, and this one also has the Kaleidoscope Cross Stitch piece, and there is a uh, quilt along that has started on this one. Um, I saw a couple of blocks pop up this morning on Instagram, and Renee Suave, Suave, you are the winner. And I apologize. I know I am butching. I, I know I butchered your last name. Uh, but Renee Suave. Suave. I, again, I looked it up on Google how to say it. And if it's wrong, I apologize. <laughs> I am not good when it comes to last names. You know, I might see the name and I might think, oh, it must sound like this. But then as I'm saying it, I'm like, I don't think this sounds right. And then I'm worried I'm butchering your name and just... <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, number nine is for this project bag, and the winner is Gail Stale. And that's how Google told me to pronounce your last name. So Gail Stale. And again, I, I'm gonna try maybe I'll just go below and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment on everybody's <laughs> that one. Um, and then number 10 is for this project bag, and that is Erin Curran. And number 11 is for the cross stitch, the smaller cross stitch finishing dots, and that is Bridget Harrison. So congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much for entering. And again, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. It's been a while since I've done a giveaway, so I'm a little bit rusty on how to do it. But if you are one of the winners, um, I will put all of the information down below on how you can get in contact with me. Um, all you need to do is give me your address and I will get your uh, prizes out in the mail to you as soon as I can. So again, thank you so much for playing. I was going to try to have a giveaway for this video, but it didn't quite work out. Um, I'm going to shoot for next video. Maybe I'll do one every other month. Um, how about I give you guys two weeks to contact me and if I don't hear from you by my next video, um, I might pull a new winner. So. Um, but again, I will do my best to go and find your comment and comment on it. And then it's like if I did butcher your name, um, <laughs> you'll know you're the winner. So, but thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> thank you again to everyone who entered to win one of the giveaways. I appreciate it. And thank you so much to Fat Quarter Shop for sending me those goodies so that I could share with you.
And as far as all of the cross stitching goes, that brings me to the very end of the cross stitching part of the video. I do have some quilting that I'm going to talk about next. So if you're not interested in that, that is a great stopping off point. And I, of course, will be back in two weeks. And you can follow me on Instagram, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, or I have a Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. And I put all of that information down below in the description box. So if you're you know, curious on what I'm working on, you can always kind of track me down there, kind of keep tabs on me. Although lately I haven't been so good about posting. Um, I don't know why I just there hasn't been a whole I haven't had a, a whole lot of of finishing things to share you know what I do have a finish to show you I can't believe I forgot <laughs> before you go um I know that I showed this in my last video um and when I showed it to you it was the finished piece the finished cross stitch piece uh and then I showed that um I would flipped it over and I showed that I used uh, fusible interfacing for the back and I had a lot of questions about that, about what weight of fusible interfacing that I use and it's just a lightweight fusible. Um, and you can pick them up anywhere. I use Pellon but it does, there's like a couple, I think Heat and Bond also makes a lightweight fusible interfacing. Um, I just, it's a personal preference. A lot of people don't like to use it. I do. I just, I feel like it helps to keep my, um, it kind of protects my stitches in the back and I just, I like the way the overall finish is. This particular piece, I did not stuff it super full. I kind of kept it light. I also distressed it with some primitive antiquing spray that I have from Primitive Gatherings and then I finished it with a fake rusty safety pin and some antique buttons of my grandma. I would have used a regular <laughs> rusty, I have a couple of, of their, I bought them, they were already rusted, but I was afraid that I would prick myself and I need to go get a tetanus shot and the luck that I have been having the past week, I didn't want to risk it. <laughs> so <laughs> until my luck changes, I'm not going to do anything that's going to bring harm to myself. <laughs> anyway, this is called... Uh, by Country Rustic Primitives. This is Primitive Style Pin Keep. And it is available on Etsy and I will make sure to put a link to her shop down below. I stitched it on a piece of 35 count sheep straw with the called for DMC. And the backing is just some Civil War reproduction fabric that I had in my stash that was left over from my red sampler quilt. Okay, but now, now that is all of the cross stitching that I have to share in this video going really well. This whole video is going really, really well. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pause the video really, really quick. And I'm going to go grab the stuff that I have been working on quilting wise. So if you're not interested in that, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Other than that, just hang tight. Okay, let's talk about quilts. So I, I think I mentioned at the beginning of my video that my quilt machine is in the shop. So as far as all the client quilting and my own, not that I had you know, any of my own, well, I mean, I do have some of my own quilts to quilt, but even if I had put together a quilt in the last two weeks, I wouldn't have been able to quilt it because the quilt machine's in the shop and it's probably gonna be there for the next couple of weeks, I hope. I mean, I hope that that's all. It just needs a cleaning and then I'll have it back. But um, I was able to work on and finish all of the red sampler blocks um, the Red Sampler Quilts Along is being hosted by Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. Um, she just released the final three blocks that you needed for your Red Sampler quilt on Monday. And I was able to, I was all caught up. I caught up on Sunday and then I was able to dive right in. And on Tuesday, I finished the, like the, on Monday night, I finished one block. And then on Tuesday night, I finished the last two. So I was able to finish. It's like the first time I've ever participated in anything and I finished on time. <laughs> so my plan is to this weekend begin cutting out all of the sashing for the red sampler quilt and hopefully maybe get it assembled to have you got to show you guys in my next video. So I will show you the blocks that I, um, the, uh, these blocks I haven't shown you because these ones I worked on over the past two weeks. So here's this one and I am stitching or I'm uh, quilting or sewing mine with all Civil War reproduction fabrics. <laughs> and this one, 
which um, a little secret, I love half square triangle quilts. I really, really do. They are a ton of work and I might complain about them when I'm working on them because they are so much work, but I just, I love them. I love the way they look. And this one here, which kind of, as I was putting it together, it kind of reminded me of this one because it looks very similar, except it's set on, it's like that. So fun fun and then this one here which I love how this one turned out I love working with Civil War reproduction fabric I know I've said it I've said it like in every video all year I just love it and there's this one and some of these have some threads on them and I apologize there's this one which I cheated on this one there was a block that we did it's right here one of these it's this one right here so we made this big one right here and there was so you made this block and then you had you could make a second block if you wanted to and so I took some of those and I cut them way down and I think this block took me like 10 minutes <laughs> and then this one and so that was the end of all of the six inch blocks that I had to make I had to make this one I love how this one turned out. And this one here, which it's possible I might have had this one done. I think at the at my when I did my last video, I think I had attempted like one of these blocks, but I don't remember which one it is. I love that one. I love basket blocks. And then there's this one, which this one looks really good. I mean, it looks completely different on camera than it does in person. It kind of looks like these outside stars are flaming a little bit. I like it. And then this one, I am a huge sucker for house quilts. And I've had my eyeball on a couple of ones. And the blocks are quite a bit bigger. They're probably like 12, 14 inch blocks. Um, but I've had, I need to make one of those because I love those like schoolhouse blocks I just I love those quilts so that's kind of I've been kind of hunting around for a, a pattern and then this was the last, well this is the last one so now I have I should have all I think you needed 50 blocks I should have all 50 uh, if I don't I'll you know I might say some words but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have all of them done <laughs> And I loved making every single one of those blocks. They were so much fun. I just love it. And just the, as I was going, just like visualizing what the quilt was gonna look like. So again, the plan is to go through and cut all of the stashing. Uh, the nice thing is, is I know some of, I know every single one of my blocks didn't finish at the exact size. Uh, they're always like, just like a smidge under, like an eighth of an inch under. And so the nice thing about the way that Lori has the quilt laid out is you can cut the sashing strips to be bigger and then you can um, square it up to I think the bigger blocks are like 14 and a half or 14 and the smaller ones are seven or seven and a half so that way even if your block doesn't finish at the like exactly six and a half you can just cut your sashing a little bit bigger and then you can um, trim them down to the size you need and I like that I watched her video and it didn't even occur to me until after I, as I was watching her video, that that's a fantastic idea. <laughs> and I like how she did that. So I'm looking forward on getting that quilt put together and having it to show you guys. Next time it won't be quilted because my machine's not here. And I'm really, really hoping that it doesn't need anything other than just a cleaning. I'm just, I'm like praying, 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 praying. So once I got my red sampler quilt blocks finished, um, I have a lot of I have a lot of quilts in progress. I have several block of the months, and I have all of those I needed to get caught up on because my main focus has just been these. That's all I've been focused on. And so now that those are done, now I'm going to start focusing on some of my other projects. Um, a project that I have not share shown or sh shared is it shared? I don't know what the word is. <laughs> I haven't shared shared this <laughs> with you guys in a while. And that is Temecula Quilt Company has a 
I, I call them block of the months because they release once a month, but it's their sewing bee Mondays and it's the second Tuesday of the month. They will release a block and you make four, four and a half inch blocks. And at the end of the year, you have 48 and you'll be able to assemble it into a quilt. So I fell three months behind. I had not done May, June or July. And so I was able to do those over the past two weeks. Um, this, well, I guess I shouldn't say two weeks because I, I, as soon as I was done with that on Tuesday, I started working on this. So this would have been Wednesday night. So this was the May block and these, I, they're hourglass that I've heard, um, shoe fly. I think, um, a lot of people call them shoe flies. Um, and these are all out of, um, civil war reproduction. A lot of it are like bits and pieces left over of some of my other projects and then um, some I did just go ahead and cut off of some of the fat quarters and I love them love them love them I think this is gonna be a really cool quilt when it's all done uh, June were flying geese so you had to make four flying geese blocks I like this one a lot love I love them all but there are some that I just really, really like how they turned out and that one. And then July's was just a very simple block, which it probably took me more time to cut this out than it did to sew it together. But I love it too. I love it, love it. And this one right here is, there's a, it's from leftovers of this quilt. And I think, oh, so is this one too that blue right there so I pretty much when I'm working on a quilt I mean I I save my scraps and I mean I save them all the way down to they're like an inch and even then sometimes I save them because a lot of times you work on something and if it's a really intricate block and you're like I need a three-fourth inch piece block I might have it <laughs> I'm bad about that I always save all of my scraps so going forward um, now that I have well, the August block won't release until the second week or second Monday, second Tuesday. It's one of those, it's definitely the second week, second Monday, I think. Um, so I'll have that to work on here in another two weeks. Um, but I am going to return to my Temecula quilt album. Um, I am on the seventh month, seven out of 12. So that is going to be my next focus is working on that and getting it done. And then after that will be my forever more block of the month, which I am very far behind on. But I figure if I can just tackle one at a time, then once it comes time to work on that forever more, I'll just be able to jump over and start working on it. And then once I have my forever more block of the month all caught up, I'm going to start working on uh, the... Um, Civil War tribute quilt that uh, Regina sent me. And I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I've got, I also have a lot of quilts that are in progress, um, like Jane Austen. <laughs> but I have some other ones that um, I, I've been kidding up and, and there's a lot of quilts that I'm getting ready to work on. And I'm really, really excited. I just, I'm so happy. I love working with Civil War. I know I've said that before, but I absolutely love working on those. They just make me so happy. I love looking at them. I just, I love them. I love them, love them. And I really wish that all those years ago, I would not have let uh, this lady in my quilt group talk me out of collecting Civil War fabrics because I really would have had some amazing quilts. So I, I'm basically making up for lost time. Is how I look at it. I've got all these amazing quilts and I just want to make them all immediately. So anyway, but that's my plans. I know I had to pause there really quick because my phone hit 10 minutes and I try not to let each video segment go over 10 minutes because it just will not upload. So <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but I think that brings me to the end of my video. I do need to show you guys Freddy because I have not done that in a while. Like the last two videos I have not shown you. And he is down here sleeping. So let me grab him really, really quick. Oh, come here, Fred. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And here he is. He just got a bath the other day because he was out uh, playing in the dirt, so he was all dirty. 
And uh, I feel bad because like last time I remember to show him as soon as I, um, are you tired? Oh, my sweet baby. I remember to show him as soon as I quit filming. And a lot of you guys have been asking how Freddie is doing. Freddie is doing wonderfully. He does not like the heat. Um, and his groomer is on, uh, she takes a summer vacation, which she's a new groomer to us. And, and I didn't realize that. And otherwise I would have had more of his hair cut off last time. So he has been kind of suffering through the heat and I feel really bad for him, but um, he's been a trooper about it. He pretty much, when he's in the house, he lays on the, um, the vent where the air conditioning is blowing up through, he lays on it. So, but he, uh, yeah, I can't believe, I don't know why I forgot to show him He's always right here, right next to me, and I always think I need to reach down and bring him up and show him, and I just, I forget. And and then as I'm turning and I'm walking and I trip over him, I'm like, oh, I forgot, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so that, as far as everything for this video, that is all I have to share. Uh, thank you so much if you stuck around till the end. I know I kind of uh, stumbled around a little bit, I, like I said, the last week has been rough <laughs> and I'm afraid I'm going to step outside and the satellite's going to fall on my head. That's how rough it's been. Um, but we all go through that. We all have our, our, our rough patches, I guess. And this week is my, my rough patch. So hopefully it will improve next week. And I hope that my toe's not broken because I don't want to go to the emergency room. So anyway, so I hope that you guys have a wonderful two weeks until we meet again. And I'm sorry if I have forgotten anything. Um, I'm trying to get better about writing things down so I can, you know, mention them in my video. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below or you can always email me. Uh, I had a couple of people who had um, sent me a message saying that they had emailed me kind of earlier in the month. And I don't know what happened. I I don't know if, it, I don't know. I I never got their email because I went to check to see if maybe I accidentally deleted it, but I think it's probably just one of those tech, like technology um, because I've had a number of people um, email me or send me a message on Instagram, you know, saying that they had sent me an email and I never responded to them. And, and so I'm really sorry. I mean, if you don't hear from me after, let's say a week, you know, just, go ahead and try to reach out again because chances are um, it's floating out in cyberspace somewhere and I just didn't get it. So anyway, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great couple of weeks. Hope you get lots of stitching done. If you would like to see what I'm up to in between the two weeks, uh, you can find me on Instagram. I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I do have a Facebook page, which is called Pumpkin Hollow Quilting, and I will put a link to both of those places down below. Thank you so much for stopping by today, and I will see you all again soon. Bye.